Wait, we can talk about some real shit, bro. Real shit, real shit, real shit every day. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Afternoon FM. I have a very special guest today. I have Anthony Edwards Curry with me, uh, director of Trap. Uh, there's some other works, I believe, but um, I don't know. Let's, there's a few. We're going to figure out a little bit more about this man. Just watched his film earlier today. And uh, we're going to see the man behind the trap. Anthony, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you uh, letting me be here. No, nah, no problem. This is a great here. place, a great spot. Uh, this place is always welcome to creatives like yourself, man. We're at phenotype stages in the prototype Patterson building. Uh, just open sound stage. Uh, actually, free photography right now. Uh, we're, off we're offering open studio for anybody who wants to go and use the space. Uh, we're also a listening room and, uh, and venue upstairs. Uh, it's first time here. I'm very actually happy. I got you from what? You're living in Asbury Park? Yeah, I'm right. Yeah, right outside of Asbury Park. What, Neptune? Right there. Yeah, Neptune. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, bro. Back home. How's, uh, yeah? You grew up there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I grew up in Neptune. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a wild place. Still is, but now there's this like sort of gentrification of the east side, which is, you know, we can get further is, into uh, that. Is is the gentrification actually being driven by the film industry? Of Asbury, j just I don't Asbury. Know. I heard a lot about the like the Netflix like. Oh it yeah, because no, they're yeah, they're coming in Asbury. of they're coming in of Fort Monmouth. Yeah. That's like uh, was that considered Long Branch or Eaton Town maybe or something? Yeah. It still is that's still the general area. I'm really shitty with geography in New Jersey. Yeah, that's like maybe 20 minutes from Asbury Park. Is Where? is fucking. Uh, can I curse on this? Yeah, go, oh, go, all right. go now. All right, cool. Oh, all, right. Yeah. All, right, yeah. all right, I didn't know if I yeah, could. Dude, you can go. Right, I could just say you what go. I want. You should, uh, you should watch the, the guy, uh, shout out to Gene Wilder. We just got off the phone. I got off the phone with him like 20 minutes ago. Probably one of the wildest episodes of all, bro. I was talking about fucking jerking off the chick shit and ice cream, bro. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So there's, no, there's no filter here. Just, Wait. Uh, just don't I thought, Gene, that's all I thought I Gene Wilder that's was dead. Me. That's not for anybody. Gene Wilder's been geek vacation. Gene Wilder is, oh. a, is a band uh, that's uh, local over here. He's a, a good friend of my friend Reese Van Riper, who's uh, oh, king of uh, king of New Jersey. They uh, swamp rock. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. Speaking they love of, Gene Wilder. Is that how they got their name? Gene. Uh, I don't know how Gene got his name. I don't. I forgot what. What it, he says it in the podcast, but I'm just like fucking. I wonder if he's a fan of. Yeah, I'm the pretty actor sure he Gene is. Wilder. He, he kind of has the same kind of aesthetic. Not necessarily. Not like. As kooky, but he's a, he's <laughs> definitely, 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 definitely a, like a special dude. Yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking of which, uh, we just had a, you ever heard of this band called Yawn Mower? No, but that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, no, all right. Where apparently they're like, um, like one of the biggest bands in like Asbury Park or something. Yawn Mower? Yawn Mower. I think they're on Mint 400. Are they a punk band? They're a punk band? Well, I'm not too like sure. I, wouldn't know. I don't know how to I know it's like some of the punk guys in Asbury. Are you a punk guy? Yeah, man. Yeah, I grew up with punk music, punk and hip hop. Tell me, it was uh, like the. It was, of, what kind of bands were you rocking? Back in the day, um, you know, I I, I love the Misfits. Yeah. Fucking, uh, what's it? The OC Rippers. You ever hear of them? Or like a uh, Cox Spar Sparrow, hmm. or um, like Blitz. I mean, Blitz is probably one of the greatest punk bands that ever exists. Like a Fishbone fam, a bit oh, Fishbone yeah. and like Bad Brains. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I like Black. Bad Brains. Yeah, yeah. Bad Brains. H H R. Yeah, man, that guy's a fucking legend. Yeah. yeah, there's like weird. He's story. still around. You should try to get him on the podcast. Yeah, he fucking. Uh, I heard crazy stories about that guy. Like he would just. Uh, he has like pseudo Bill Murray stories. Really? Yeah, where it's like. Like you catch him at like a fucking. No, like you'll wake up and H R will fucking just be on your couch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be tight. If I woke up, I'll be like, "Yo, bro, you want some?" You want a drink? Yeah. You want Tell me water? how you wrote Pay to Come. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or the whole Black Dots album that's like one of the greatest. I love Live in D.C. Live in D.C. was my Oh, yeah, shit. Live in D.C. Uh -huh. Yeah. Black Dots was probably my, that was my like introduction to punk. There's also this band called Death and not the Death, the Death metal band or b no. black metal band. There's this band called Death that was, they call them the originators of punk music. There's what? actually a, a documentary called the band called Death. Directed by my friend Mark Covino, Corvi Covino. and uh, he, uh, yeah, he made this documentary, and they found these tapes. I think the son found them in his his father's attic or something, 
and he was like, what is this? He was like, oh, it's my old band. And they were like, they like had a record deal and they dropped off, but they only put one record and it never really went in there went anywhere but there was these cats from detroit mm. and they call them the originators of punk music really yeah it was like or it was before like sex pistols and the ramones they were like the really? first or maybe like right around that time huh yeah band called death the documentary is great you should that's check crazy, it out bro yeah check that out fucking totally yeah big fan of fear too that's oh like, fear yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. i like about punk is that there's always like there are bands that'll just be like one word it's like, it's like yeah, 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 or you like forget that. There's a, probably a lot of other bands that I'm like forgetting the name that later I'm gonna be like, ah, shoot a fucking. How, what kind of hip hop did you get into when you were younger? Um, well, I had like a weird. So there was like the '90s side because I grew up with like a lot of old heads and then y- young kids. So like there was these two sides. Like there was like Lil Wayne and all these people, you know, busting out. Yeah. And then. You know, there's cats like Biggie and Tupac or Snoop and Ice Cube. I I liked uh, like gangs. I would say Gangstar. Yeah. Uh, DJ Premier, bro. Gu- yeah, 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 and Guru is probably one of my favorite rappers of all time. And then uh, you know, Inspector Deck and like the Wu Tang guys. Really? And then I Inspector ended up. Inspector Deck is your Wu Tang guy. Yeah, or Method Man. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Everybody... And I got to work with Deck. I did a video for. Um, uh, R.A. the Rugged Man, who's a friend of mine. I, he's also to mention, I found R.A. R.A.'s music when I was young through a, uh, one of the Tony Hawk Pro Skater game, yeah, yeah, games. Yeah, yeah. And I ended up working I produced three music video, three That's projects crazy. with him. How did that end yeah. up happening? Um, actually, Tina Krause, who's in my uh, in trap right. she's uh one of the she plays um, Mercy, one of the two sister thieves. The nuns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, she uh she's known ra for years and uh you know we went to one of his shows and like we kind of stayed in contact and we just like kind of hit it off and like been working together and i think he's trying to write a movie now i don't know i don't want to say too much right, but, no, but yeah we'll keep that on the yeah ra the rugged man he, he's he's dope i consider him in the top you know yeah 10 greatest rappers of all time all right bro so tell me a little bit about growing up in uh, in Neptune. Like, what's the what's this place like? It's weird because uh, I was watching and I was like, oh wow, it's like it's like Patterson by the Sea. <laughs> yeah, that's what it, it's it's like ghetto by the sea. It's like a um, it's nice. like and it's like half through the wood, like it's half in the woods, half in the in the beach. So it's like this like. I mean, it's no Asbury Park in general. Uh, you know, it's nicknamed Dark City. So. Really? Uh, the acronym for trap was the real Asbury Park. So, uh, what would you? Oh, you asked me about growing up there. Uh, it was like it was violent, bro. Like, really? Like even like in an adolescent form, like I saw violence at a really early age. Huh. So you almost become adapted to it. Where like you're like ready to pounce or fight or get shit done. Like yeah. that's how cats are from there. They're like. I don't know, it's just, there's this, like... Survivalist? Yeah, and that's, like, kind of where the film lies, because there, I feel like there's this, like, dark cloud that, like, lurks over the city. Yeah. And they've been, you know, it's been considered dark city, I think, since, like, the 70s riots. You know, yeah. there, I, there's a crazy book, I forget the name of it, but it's about, like, like every 20 years of 4th of July, like, some crazy shit happens huh. in Asbury Park in, like, Neptune area. But yeah, like I don't know. If it's like a, I don't know icon if it's like a thing. curse. The fucking the, what's the, 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 the it's like the painted guy. Oh yeah. yeah what yeah, is yeah. what is that thing? Oh uh, Tilly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah Tilly. That's that actually comes from uh, Coney Island. Uh, Tilly comes from Coney Island because the guy that built Coney Island, built Cran Central Station, is the same guy that built or uh, built the convention hall and the casino and all that old infrastructure. And uh-huh. if you look at the Paramount building in the convention hall, you could see like Grand Central Station and having very similar themes and stuff. So it's like, even that building is such like a beautiful piece. Like, I think they were trying to talk about like changing it or something, but I don't think they should do that. Or the casino, I think they were talking about, or they were trying to, but there's, it's like kind of falling apart. So it's nothing they could do besides like, just try to keep the structure up, I think. I could be misquoting all this shit, but like I'm sure you could, <laughs> yeah, sure you could look it up on like Asbury Park Press or something and figure it. But I know there was an article recently about, yeah. But uh, yeah, Asbury is such a magical place because it, it's been having this like wave of like ups and downs the whole like, yeah, throughout its whole life. Even like the guy that found fucking uh, 
Asbury. This guy John Bradley. I don't know too much about him or where the fuck he's from or but I, I heard he found Brad he was uh he was butt naked on the beach smoking like mescaline or something. Mm. And then he found Asbury Park. And I think he named it after his friend or something. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know, these old fucking white guys. I don't know. Yeah, we hear apparently Alexander Hamilton did it, but Patterson's kinda had the same like weird uh it's not about ups and downs. It's like it's like they founded this place, and then there was like the silk boom, and then we were like the shit. People were burning like, smoking fucking cigars, burning hundred dollar yeah. bills, like type of shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then uh, you know the industrial revolution. Apparently, at one point we were gonna be considered the capital of the fucking United States. Like, that yeah, is. yeah, Patterson and fucking. Whoa. Uh, we're we, sitting. We're sitting on royal land right now, bro. Uh, it's that now it's just a multi-billion dollar heroin operation. Like, but nah, it's getting better, man. Shout outs to fucking the, the mayor right now is like really fucking doing. Uh, he's doing like a. It's the first time I've seen hope for the city. I seen this dude eating an ice cream bar, walking in the middle of the road. With his shirt off. And I was like, mayor. bro, it's a little... <laughs> yeah, it was cold. <laughs> that's, that's the, that's mayor, the mayor, mayor, bro. Yeah, yeah. He was eating an ice Shout cream cone, to- but he had a COVID mask on like, on his chin. And the ice cream was like leaking into the COVID mask. Oh, but yeah, he was walking down. Bro. That's right, that's yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Right. He had two different socks on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was wearing shorts with no shirt. <laughs> that's your mayor? And it's freezing. <laughs> no, it's freezing cold outside. I'm wearing a jacket, big ass bomber jacket. Oh, this guy's out of control. Mayor? Yeah, he got a yeah. We should invite him. We should. I should have. I actually him. invited yeah. the mayor. Really? I did he? Him. Did he try to come on? Ah, uh, I. Not yeah. He's been to this place before. Oh shit. He's cool. It's, it's, no, no shade to Andre or Bill Pasco. Nah. Bill, Bill, Shout Bill, out to the mayor. Yeah, yeah. He's fucking. He's a good dude. Uh, he's like really for the arts. Like he's like actually trying to push like film. Oh, cool. Into the place, and it's like there's like. There's gentrification that's happening in this city, too. Right. But it's, like... Dude, it's just, like, a fucking, like... Like, I grew up here, and my fucking grandfather, like, came from Lebanon and landed here, and then he brought his family up, and they fucking, right. like... You know, we did a little bit better, and fucking, you know... Everybody got to go to school and fucking whatever, and then, like, you know, my dad kind of just stumbled, and fucking now I'm, like, trying to pick up the pieces and shit. Mm. So fucking, uh... It's like that classic, like, immigrant story. Like, yeah. I feel like when my family come from Italy off the boat, you know, to Ellis Island, sort of was the same thing. Like, like, tell, me, tell me a little bit about that, man. What's, what's your family like? Um, you know, I come from, like, a big, like, kind of close-knit, you know, Italian-American family. Yeah. Um, Irish, Columbia. Irish. Yeah, and then Mr. Colon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's sort of funny because even in trap, like, Yo, everything Columbia? goes back to the everything goes back to the movie. And it's funny because, like, you think you hear that name and you're watching a movie and you think he's gonna be this like real goomba guy, nah. but he doesn't even talk like like, nah. Jay, like and I wanted him to play it like that. Like I didn't want him to play like the typical like, Ita- like I don't even know if James Brown is Italian. Like we might have to ask or J D Brown. He plays um James Brown. Is yeah, his name is James. I don't even know if James his, Brown is Italian. So it, no, his his name, na- his, his name is James Brown. The uh, the actor who plays Mr. Colombo. His name's James Brown. I've been working with him for years, but his stage name is uh, J.D. Brown. And he obviously couldn't use understand. James Brown. And I think Daniel Brown or Danny Brown is another act, so he couldn't use that. So, like, Hardest he was like, Hardest working yeah. man in film business. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, J.D. Brown played uh, Mr. Colombo. But, yeah, when I talked to him, but I didn't want him to play it like this, like, you know, New Jersey, Goomba, Italian. Yeah. Like, I guess he just has an Italian last name. Mm. Yeah, yeah. no, nah, fucking, uh, so how did you find your way into film? Shit, man. Uh, sometimes I don't even know what happened first, like being born or making movies. Mm. Like I feel like it was in my DNA. My grandfather was a projectionist. Really? Yeah. So I That's always some cinema parody. And, and I never, shit. I never knew. It. I, uh, I don't think he was a very nice man, but uh, yeah. I he died like in the eighties or something. But uh, he was a projectionist at the Neptune Drive and a lot of the theaters around Monmouth County and shit. And uh. I always said like the uh, the silver nitrate of the film, the 35 millimeter, must have like got into his fingertips yeah. and like got into my DNA. Huh. So I always like had that theory like, uh, and I've only f- I only found that out a few years ago, like yeah. that he was a projectionist. My grandma like mentioned it in passing yeah. one time. She was like, "Oh yeah, your grandfather was a projectionist." I was like, "What?" Yeah. I was like, "Oh, it makes sense." Like, yeah. 
I, I don't know. He like, touched the film, then he, he touched the off. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I was inseminated. Yeah, I don't know. Who knows what the fuck? He might, he might have been eating the film. He was a crazy. He might have been chopping it up and snorting it or something. He was a crazy bastard. But uh, you know what I'm saying? He was like, you know what I'm saying? He was, who knows what he was doing? But uh, yeah. So I, I just always fell in love with. <laughs> I always fell in love with film and. Uh, my, you know, my dad's a big cine, uh, like a cinephile, and he kind of like introduced me to cinema and showed me like really great movies at a young age. And yeah, then, yeah, you actually mentioned one of my favorite directors, who I feel, I feel is the Scorsese we don't fucking. Ignore. You talking about Abel Ferrar? Oh, bro, he's the best. Bro. Yeah, I just best. saw him. Really? I just saw him like uh. uh he's eating ice cream. Like sure. a month. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 that was not anymore. Abel's sober now. He's living in fucking Italy, right? Yeah, he's living in Italy. He's making uh He's making some good flicks. I just saw um, Our Christmas. Where'd you, they where did, did it. you see Abel Ferrara? He, he, show, he does a lot of shows at the Roxy, the Ro- Roxy Cinema in New York, at the really? Roxy oh, Hotel. My, fucking, my, uh, my, like, basically my brother. I was going to go there yesterday, uh, or tomorrow, actually. He um, works there? No, he's the head chef. Shout oh, out to, shit. Shout out to Abraham Ramirez. You're my, my shout boy. out to Abraham. He, pra- he probably knows Elise, and she runs, like, the film... And that the, she runs like the theater part and a lot of the screens. Really? At least ask her, ask him if he knows her. Oh, that's so crazy. It's crazy, bro. like yeah, small yeah, connections yeah. and shit. But um, yeah, I just saw Our Christmas. Yeah, Abel was there. His uh, composer Joe Delia, uh, uh, Delia. I know uh, Joe's wife PJ. Right. She's cool. But uh, yeah, that whole crew was all. I, yeah, I've met Abel a few times. I actually saw him perform with uh, ASAP Rocky. Dude, he fucking. Bro. He's at cool. The end of, at the end of King of uh, King of New York, and he, I think he in the fucking uh, in the bonus content, man. He uh, he does uh, what's it called? He, I think he does a cover of Schooly D. Oh like guitar, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's like, like blah, 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 blah. yeah, yeah. Well, the Bad Lieutenant, I think. Great. Bad Lieutenant, uh, Schooly D used like a cashmere beat that song Cashmere by Led Zeppelin. Yeah. And then like, they put it out on VHS, and I think Jimmy Page like sued them or something. Yeah. And then he had to end up going in there and like yeah he like played the song himself fucking like rules, w- him and a, him and a guitar. Fucking rules, no, Abel's bro. a cool he's dude, so cool. and he's such a sweet fucking guy too. And pretty, he's very like, and just like insightful. Like his Q and As are like, oh, I'm man. upset. Like I could listen to Abel talk all day long. Like, dude, cause he's like the only like like I watch. You know what I love about his films, bro? Is like Abel. Abel makes me like feel like filmmaking is like a possible thing. As yeah. an artist, you know what I mean? Like, there's, like, Marvel movies where, like, I don't have a billion dollars. Right. Like, I don't have, like, all this shit. Abel's on, like, the DVD commentaries. He's, like, he's like basic filmmaking 101 right here. Just put everybody in fucking black. Everybody's <laughs> just in black. You don't got to worry about shit. Put everybody in black. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, like, yes. King of New like, York commentary, like, like, I think like, he's like, like, boy. He's, like, look at my boy with the fucking camera. He's, like, he's, like, talking about the cinematographer. He's, like, look, he's, like, look at my boy with the fucking camera right now. Look at this fucking shot. He's, like, he's, like, he's, like, he's, like, he's, like, it's my boy Lazo right now. He's sticking a finger up this fucking stripper's ass. My yeah. You ever see the <laughs> drip? The Driller Killer commentary. I think he goes the one time he goes past him and a chick because he's in it. Uh, he, uh, and he goes, uh, he was like, "Yeah, dude, I think I just made this movie just to get close to this chick, man." <laughs> and I was like, "Yo, yeah, Abel, you're fucking." Yeah, everybody. Yeah, Martin Scorsese's he's like, "Well, that, I had to, 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 you know, honor the the, the great filmmakers, of, right? Uh, John Renoir and the, 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 I, I love Martin Scorsese. There's a funny there's story. We we could we could literally do a whole podcast on just Abel Ferrara, I think. But there's a funny story about uh, Ice T. Uh, seeing the first cut of Our Christmas, that movie I just saw in yeah. the 35 millimeter, um, that he went to go see his. Uh, Abel called him and was like, "Come over, I'm going to screen the film for you. We'll go, we'll go to the movie, see a screening." So he went to the, uh, he went to Abel's house and like Abel had the movie set up in like the corner, uh, like kitchen, like on VHS, and then Abel was like smoking crack with his like Asian girl yeah, like in the yeah. back. So Ice T was like, "Yo, the first time, yo, he's a pretty like." You know, Abel's a well-respected yeah, yeah, director, yeah. and you go to fucking the dude's house, and you're like watching it in the kitchen, and Abel's behind you smoking crack and Dude, shit. Dude, it's it's that's what's fucking crazy about it. It's yeah. like this guy, and he's still making like masterpieces. Yeah, like I, Bad Lieutenant is a masterpiece. Bro. It really is. It's a masterpiece. Even his last movie, uh, Tommaso Siberia, uh, the. I 
I haven't followed. I think the last one was it, not Salo. Is it El Salo? Do you do El Salo? Oh, that's a uh, like, Pasolini's film. He did a movie Pasolini about Pasolini. Yeah, 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 The guy who directed yeah, Salo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was the last one I saw. Was that like, was it. That was a good flick. Well, he works with Willem Dafoe, and I just saw his movie with Ethan Hawke, Zeros and Ones. Yeah, I he heard did about in Italy. That. that was a cool. It was fucking awesome. It was a cool flick. Yeah, I try to go see every able like every able movie. Because he just does it. Like that's, that's he's a desperado though, and I I can relate. Guy. He's a real person. I can relate to that because like, he's another guy. Like he don't care if the movie's for a hundred dollars or a hundred million. Like he's gonna make it either yeah. way, and he's gonna do whatever he can pull and like pull favorite and whatever he can do because he's like, he's a fucking art. He's an he's artist. A fucking artist, bro. Yeah. yeah, he's great, dude. Yeah. Uh, and think about that. Hilarious. Think about that. The, the some of the most prestigious art in the world was not a commissioned piece or anything. Nah. These guys just did it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Huh. And I think that's, even as us as filmmakers, we have to keep that in mind. Yeah. Where sometimes, it's you not, know, uh, even now I'm talking to a few studios about the next film and stuff, yeah. and it's just like, it gets, I love it. Yeah. I love it. I love every second of it. But like, either way, I'm going to keep making movies. Like, there's nothing yeah. stopping me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's why I own the cameras, bro. Yeah. That's the whole shit is like, I just can't, I'm like, I'm not going to like, oh, I have 200 bucks a day and I need to get the Ari. Right. And I got to fucking. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, dude, I'm filming now. Right. Like, yeah, we, we, you're down, you're down. All right, let's go. Let's right, because you have it in your back pocket. Yeah, like, let's you go. can just I don't, fucking. I, but I don't care what it, I, it was a point where I was like, oh, I don't know, like, you know what I mean? Like, there's a, there's a fucking thing with filmmakers, bro, where it's like, uh, you idealize, and I've idealized so much. It like, you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, well, this is the thing, and this is, you know what I mean? And you could, like, pre-plan your shit, but, like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, there's, like, a saying where it's, like, uh, it's, like, people make plans, and God, like, fucking does, I forgot what the fucking saying is. But, like, you, uh, it's just make shit, bro. There's a, yeah, there's a really good meme I started to do, and it's, like, I, it actually went with photography. I really started to, to get into, uh. I work in like movements where it's uh, like I get like momentum for a thing. Actually, the podcast was a derivative. I was telling you off screen that like the, the whole shit was um, we were talking about just making fucking just art with our fucking phones. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And uh, the lens on my camera was fucked up and it was just shaking a lot, which is a great aesthetic. I really love the, the, the images it was right. producing, but it's like, you know, it's not really practical. So I had no right. real, like, I had that camera, but it's like, you know, I'm like, that's like a very, like, I'm going out. And like, I'm you going. could w use that for, like, one project, but you don't want every project you do to be, like, shaky yeah, lens Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to be the shake guy. I <laughs> yeah. want to be known as the shit. It's like, oh, this is, oh, man, you can produce those shake videos. Yeah. I'm like, no. But I appreciate, like, people who just use what they have. That was the thing with Trap. Like, I just... Grabbed any camera I could get my hands on yeah. to shoot with it. Like, yeah, I was you know? gonna ask about that, but hold on, let me finish. Uh, fucking, uh, what's it called? Yeah, dude. So this was a derivative of that. Was I didn't have like a real like like I have the Fuji and I, I work with the Fuji a lot, right. but it's like it's always I'm shitty with exporting, mm. so I'll just have like a shitload of photos that are on it, and it's like I'm not like going out and seeing. Sometimes I just want to get it while I'm doing my shit, right. so I just end up getting that meditation of making something every day and then it just builds steam and i didn't have that meditation so the energy had to go somewhere so i found it this and podcast was in my mind for a long time and then i just started getting like different perspectives you get like an art dealer you get like a fucking you know porno guy you'll get a fucking uh i don't even know like get rock it. guy yeah, yeah. you know what i mean like a filmmaker painter right you know what i mean get the, the fucking trigger. guy who works construction down yeah, the block it. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it's good you just get these intimate portraits and you see where people are really coming from them it's fucking it's a uh, it's helped a lot as a filmmaker as well it's like an outlet plus you could yeah like you said it's you're seeing yeah, 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 yeah. you're like producing like like special stories that maybe people don't hear about all the time oh, yeah. or like from different perspectives you know yeah fucking uh had the uh that's the i, I think i i'm uh, we, we have a mutual connection with this guy david shoner shout out to david yeah, shout out to david great great mustachio film works that's my man i love david he's a dude he's a fucking like a champion of this he's show. great he loves film yeah he just loves it that's yeah. what, that's why I, I admire the most he has a is a thing called creatively sane and uh started uh he's just a big fan of my photography but i, I need to make more films but like you yeah. know uh but yeah man uh uh, he just has this thing called Creatively Sane, and this is, like, one of the outlets of doing it. And fucking, uh, 
you know, it's just part of it. But now, like, you know, now I'm, like, starting to produce more fucking photographs, still doing the podcast, and it's just now there's, like, there's just that build up, man. But, uh, but yeah, man, I don't know. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I feel you. Because you need that, you need that outlet. And that's the thing with David, too. Like, he loves film. Like, first time I met David, I went up to him. I was like, hey, how you doing? I'm Anthony. He was like, oh, I know who you are. Yeah. I love your shit. Like, yeah. love your work. I want to see more, like... He's just a champion of film. Like, yeah. like you said, it's like a true champion of film. And, yeah. like, I think, like, especially being in New Jersey, like, us cats got to stick together. You it's know? bringing a whole fucking industry to this damn city. It really is. Yeah, this whole city, bro. There's no, there's, like I said, like, it's a, there's, like, you know, there's opportunity in Patterson. And it's, like, there's, like, all this thing. But it's, like, this whole thing. Like, we have all these, like, places that we could go and, like make shit and there's all these people that you know what i mean in la is and like, beautiful imagery too like even oh, driving right. getting off the highway just like the graffiti and just like the 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 landscape like i was like i could put the camera anywhere and this real. would be interesting real. and real and like hollywood would spend you know 10 million dollars trying to recreate this which is crazy right really and we could just go outside and do it yeah and that's the, the beauty that, of it that's all. magic because especially in new jersey you could sh- shoot the center city or you could shoot the south of france yeah new jersey is so versatile yeah because yeah. you got the beach you got the wood you got you know you got you got as much as you going could work down with. to where did i stay i think i went down the ocean and it was weird man i like i was i went down there because i wanted to see fort monmouth and i was like oh this is santa monica mm-hmm. i was like i'm seeing like because i lived in la i lived in la for like four years and four years in norcal did you love it? Uh, I loved L.A. when I first got there. I was actually having a conversation about this earlier. I loved L.A. when I first got there, but it's like I got – I went to community college over there, and, like, I went to film school. And, then like, now when I'm there, it's like I'm on, I'm on a job. Yeah. Like, no matter what I do, it's like I'm on a job. That's, how, a- that's how I feel about it. Like, you go there, do your thing, and yeah. then you want to come back and get away from, like – I loved living there. It's a fun time when you're living there, and, like, I was just, like, a student. And now, and then I went up to North Cal and I was growing weed for like four years. It's all good. Fucking, uh, I, I, <laughs> I grew weed for like four years. And like, it was weird. I, I went to. Were you woods. still making movies and making art? Yeah, yeah. We yeah. actually went up to make a documentary oh. called uh, Marijuana Paradise. And uh, then we made a second film called uh, Gorilla for Vincente that I, th- I just finished cutting. But it's like my Russian mom and my Russian brothers, like, uh, it's like their whole thing. But uh, yeah, man, fucking, we, we, we did two films. Of, like I, I went with uh, people that were from like the, the film school that I was at, oh, cool. and we. Uh, Where'd you go to school? Uh, LACC, it's the oh, People's okay. the People's College, bro. People's it's like USC college. for people who have no money. All right. But it's uh, you learn the same shit, and it's free, and they pay your rent. You think that was helpful to you, film school? Uh, I feel like it's helpful in a sense that uh, I don't have to like, if I go on a set. Uh, I'm not like, I could build a relationship with people, but I'm just working my way up the military ranking of, of that specific like production. I'm like working within the production company in film school. It's, uh, I do one for you. You do one for me. I right, do right. one for you. You do one for it's me. It's like them, the connection type yeah, deal. You're like... building your crew, bro. And right. like, you know, I wouldn't have met a Russian family. I wouldn't have fucking, um, you know, I would have, I wouldn't have done these projects and I wouldn't have had like, you know. We, we've been building for, like, damn near eight years now, you know what I mean? Right. It's, like, it's all on an independent basis. It's not like, you know, I worked at Disney for fucking whatever. Right, and right. There's my resume, you know? Look, let's apply to Universal. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Like, I, don't, I don't really like making shit like that. I want to be, like, you know, like, this is my fucking boy. Yo, you got this shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Like, Go out, shoot this yeah. shit, make yeah. sure it's in focus. I'm in, yeah, I'm in the fucking, I'm, I'm in the Abel Ferrara type of shit. So. <laughs> I'm, I'm smoking crack in the corner, but, uh, you know, yeah. but, you know, fucking, <laughs> trying to make like a bad lieutenant because, like, think about it, bro. Like, does, I mean, maybe Miramax had fucking sanctioned that shit in the 90s, but, like, uh, well, the, ni- the 90s were a good time for cinema because they had all the banks that were supporting the, supporting the, studios now all, all those banks and rich people left and people were taking chances more mm. now there's zero you think that people, people not, are taking content chances now it's like true crime yeah, 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 yeah. is getting like at least six but then there's people like a24 that is pretty Maybe. doing beautiful work yeah. is making great yeah. films yeah man fucking uh which is a24 it's like they 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 get it's like the Miramax of now. 
Yeah, sort yeah. of. Like back in the day, like you would have like the professional and fucking like 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 you know, despite the rape charges, Weinstein was a really good scout. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah. Like, I, yeah. Yeah. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> like, I don't want to comment. <laughs> no, nah, but like. <laughs> He was produced gr- some great movies. Produced some great movies. But Not I don't know. If that's all. Yeah, terrible human. <laughs> yeah, but, that's uh, all I'm going to say. But <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't. No, nah, fucking, uh, but like, A24, man, like, uh, it's weird because some of the shit, like, they'll produce now, like, it feels like an A24 movie. Right. Where it's like, you know, I'm like, I'm a single father. Yeah, and, uh, we, it becomes we, a meme. Like yeah. they make like a twenty four as like a meme or something now. Like or like it's like a, but that, I feel like that's with culture. Like you said the word content before. Yeah, and like I feel like content sort of ripped the yeah. artistry of what cinema really is about sometimes. Yeah. So it's like kind of about like not just trying to make like the next sequel or Marvel movie or something. But I would like somebody offered me a Marvel movie. I would, you take it at heart. Maybe I wouldn't turn it down, you know, if the money's right or something. But. Well, that's the thing is there's, like, there's, I think there is a gap in that, man. I feel like there's a thing, there's, like, because, like, I, I, I fuck with, like, what Scorsese said with, like, you know, this is, like, you know, this is, like, a, a an amusement ride park. Like, mm. an amusement yeah, ride, yeah, yeah, yeah. an actual piece of cinema. Right. It's, like, we're going to, like, have an experience right. of, like, you know. Uh, yeah, roller coaster ride. Yeah. But then there is, there are moments where there's like, you know, there's like, like Logan was fucking beautiful, bro. Yeah. And they're releasing like the black. Or like the, even the first Iron Man and yeah. like all those were like pretty magical, cool flicks. But then when you see the same stuff over and over, or I don't like how it drowns out other work. Yeah. Like I still feel like those those movies can exist because and a lot of people put a lot of hard work into those movies because those movies are hard to make. Yeah. Yeah, and there's like a lot of, you know, those movies feed a lot of people, so you got to think in a sense, but I don't like how they sort of out the other movies in the theaters. Yeah. Where like some movies that are really great will just go straight to, because they're so like, oh, we need, you know, 30 screens to play this new Marvel movie in, and it's going to take, you know, and it's going to be in there for a year and a half or like a year or Mm. something, you know what I'm saying? So it, it becomes a thing where it's like, no, nah, let let yeah. some other stuff be cycled in. Some like stuff that's like written from the you know the inside out. I think the festival circuit's still like a viable like thing for like independent filmmakers. Like it's like still like the like the real yeah. outlet for it. Or you think, like, that's yeah. how it is with trap. Like yeah. tra- it's like straight like festival, and then the festivals lead to whatever, and then then you're just getting phone calls and emails from people you would never think huh. would see it or something. But yeah, I still think festivals are the most most people who told me, like, who I asked, like, advice or whatever for were like, yeah, submit to festivals. Like, yeah. go to festival And go to them, too. Yeah. And, like, connect. And yeah. It's a whole community, man. Like, no. I said, like, those, like, Roxy, Metrograph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Lincoln Center. Lincoln Center. Even Trap. Like, it premiered at the Museum in a Moving Image. And yeah. I used to go to that theater, like, all the time. That was, like, one of my favorite fucking theaters. It looks like a spaceship. It's fucking beautiful, yeah, yeah, beautiful yeah. place. My buddy's right, right by, right around the block from there. Really in Queens? Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a good, that's a cool, cool, cool area in Queens. Yeah. Um, Kaufman Studios is right next to there. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it was just like, you know, you go to these theaters like, and then your movie plays at this theater and then you're like, wow, like wow, like, damn, how the fuck did I get here? You know. Yeah. You're like looking. But you're like, oh shit, hard work and fucking dedicate and just trying to be bold and different and Let's or go maybe on not to so the much. Making of fucking of trap, like how did uh, how did you start to conceive it? Um, I wrote trap. Well, I was I've been I wrote it as a kid. I wrote trap as a like a 16 year old kid. Um, and it was just like uh, I was obsessed with this idea of uh, deconstructing narrative. Mm. I was obsessed with this like. I, I've been calling it like sort of this liquid narrative. So I, st- like, I wanted to approach narrative from like another place where like the movie almost moves through you like a drug experience or like these images. There's like this tapestry of images, like almost like a collage or something, or like a picture, like a family picture book or something, where like all these images are coming at you from some other place. Mm. So it's almost yeah, like looking through a picture book. Like one picture, you see your mom sitting on the toilet. The next, your dad's 
taking a picture with Eddie Van Halen or something. You know, it's just yeah. like ran like almost images that are random because I wanted to make a movie with like that consisted of just like scenes, like vignettes, like slices of life rather yeah. than like uh an A B C plot. I think Godard said the quote like uh movies can have a beginning, a middle and an end, but they don't have to be exactly in that order. Mm. And I was just always kinda obsessed with that idea and like I just heavy inspired by like the French New Wave or like Ital- Italian neo realist films probably more, but they were always kind of told like, and everybody says like, because in this modern like pop culture we live in, everybody's like, oh like Pulp Fiction. It reminds me like how the stories, and I, I guess yeah. that, I guess I can like agree with that in yeah. a sense. But like, I've been just trying to attach just like yeah, deconstructing the narrative, making it feel um like lucid, like you're dreaming. Yeah. Like, and I wanted. I wanted Trap to be not something you just watch, but you, like, experience it. And I think that's, like, we go back to talking about movies being shown in theaters. Like, I think Trap is a type of movie that belongs in a, in yeah. a theater because it is an experience. And sometimes watching stuff, you and know, at home is different. when I was watching, I was, like, trying to, like, actually put the... I was like, what genre would this fucking be? I was like, this is, like... But, like, which is weird because, like, you know, your mind goes into that, like... Right. That form of, like, let me put this shit in a folder. Right. You know I mean, where it's like this crime story. thriller. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, like, yeah. If, it felt like fucking horror crime neo noir fucking like LSD. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, that, yeah, that's like a perfect like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like it's like a it's a lot of people ask that like what genre and I sometimes I don't have an answer. You just backhand. It's almost like a genre fuck. Like I wanted to, f- I almost wanted to be like fuck genre. Yeah. Where it's like. This movie is just me. Like, it's just all my influences and everything. Like, yeah. I, can I put a word to it? Yeah, it's a crime film. But, yeah, it does have horror elements. And it does have... But it's not... I can't call it a horror movie because it's not The Shining or The Exorcist. But it's horrific. Yeah. So, yeah, I've always... I always just kind of... When people ask that, I was just like, yeah, it's kind of just like, fuck genre. Like, you can't... You can't put a word... Like, you can't put a simple word or... Just like a movie. Maybe, yeah. like, that genre is just... An Anthony Curry it's movie. Very or visually something. fucking appetizing, bro. I was there. I was like, damn. I was like, I was like my fucking got hoops, bro. Thank you. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. yeah. You got really good. And that's how I wanted to approach it. Like, I wanted the film to feel like, uh, like some sort of like hip hop poetry or yeah. some sort of like trap poetry, mm. where like, uh, you can't put like a word to it. Like, you can't put a distinction of what, what it truly. Is. It's just yeah, like these images yeah. being punched in your face, like. It's like a lot. It was like I was like, damn, like this guy fucking, yeah. I don't know. It was, uh, it was, it was like the jumping of like aesthetic it was, uh, was it's not like it wasn't jarring. It was like a weird like I was like, huh. Oh. Like, it was like, you know, like you, you're like taken aback a little bit because you haven't really experienced that. But it's like uh, going from like the really like washed out like bleachy fucking like pastels to like black and white with like this beautiful grain to like fucking you know to like really heavy neon like your right. that's like fucking it was like ADD yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe <laughs> I got a little bit of that or but something. Were... <laughs> <laughs> I was like what? thank you yeah no it's like one dialogue scene and there's like four aesthetics like going on no, I was it's like true. damn I was like alright yeah cause I wanted like I've been doing this thing where like conversations in film like I'm I'm a greedy director. Like I'm very greedy. Like and every time I make a movie I want more direction, more sounds, more cuts, more I'm just like very I just want more and more and more like you know they have to rip me off the set to get me to stop shooting like mm. so um it becomes this thing where it's like uh you yeah, you're just chasing the moment and like uh old keys don't open new doors. So like I always try to stay fresh and, like, new. And, like, everybody who saw the movie kept saying, like, the word innovative. And that that kind of, like, you know, you can't really call yourself innovative because it sounds, like, pretentious yeah. or something. But, like, uh, I just feel like, yeah, I just want to chase something that's new. And, like, I think Kubrick said it, like, every time you make a movie, you try to reinvent the cinema. Yeah. So I kind of follow that sort of mantra of, like, Did you find it to, to be reinvent. a little bit like the other Kubrick quote, the fucking, it's like trying to write, write war and peace, like, in a bumper car fucking shit? Yeah. Yeah. 
especially like uh, such like a violent story, like a violent story, and you're talking about like a lot of truth and stuff. So you're trying to uh, you're trying to go around the the edges of like um, not being like conformed to this like you know save the cat structure of like writing a story or like because yeah. even in script form it was still like. Like, I knew what I wanted. I knew I wanted it to have that feeling, so. Yeah. I try to, like, yeah, keep chasing that. Smart, bro. Smart. Yeah, no, like, uh, I was gonna ask you, what, what, uh, there's, like, very, like, there's some, like, specific shit. There was one shot where it was this dude, he was, uh, he was in a car, and it's there, and I think it was black to white, or it was, like, a normal shot, and then it just kind of still framed and went into this red, like, this very, like, like yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. It was like, that's uh, my little G- node to like old giallo 1970s giallo films <laughs> of like italian yeah they would like fade to red like old horror movies they or like in the trailer you would see it would like you know fucking you know zoom into and then like freeze frame and like do like a film burn or something was but. that uh was that like a choice like you were making like did you do like you had like so after after traffic shot and you got fucking the theoretical bins of fucking film. Right. Is that like, is that something you're like, you're planning like on the set where you're like, I'm gonna fucking hold here and then fucking do it or is that like an No, a lot of that stuff's that? decided in the edit because yeah. I try to just shoot, I shoot everything. I shoot everything around like whether it's Polaroid, 35 millimeter, digital, yeah. whatever, just try to shoot on whatever is around how many cameras on your you? iPhone. How many, yeah, how, how, what is how many you, what, cameras? What cameras were you? In this thing. We shot more than one. Well. Most, yeah. There's a lot. It's definitely like a mixed media film. It was all the GH series, Panasonic, Lumix, all of them. GH two, three, four, five, six, or not the six, but the five. Mostly the mostly the two. The most of the movie was shot in the GH two. Yeah. GH five for a lot of it. Uh, Black Magic Pocket 4K. Uh, a couple shots of the Black Magic OG Pocket Camera. Uh, Fucking the digital Bolex, we shot some like Canon 5D. Uh, we shot these little Japanese uh, toy cameras. I have it like mimics like an eight millimeter film. We shot on actual Super 8 um, VHS. Damn. We shot on yeah, everything. Yeah, I noticed some of the VHS Polaroids. Shots. I thought that was still. like an editing aesthetic that you ended up. Doing. No, that was real, real VHS. Oh, that's fucking crazy. Yeah. Bro. I wanted it to what feel like... What is it like, like compi- so, like, after you, you're you shooting, they're just, like, these are just all the files of it, and then it's, like, let me just... Amount yeah, and then, things. like, after you shoot the VHS, like, I projected it onto a white wall and re-recorded it in uh, HD. So it was, like, that was, like, another process of the shooting, but it it helped me because I could go through it, and, like, I'd have to sit there and watch and make sure it's in focus or... Shit, so, yeah, there was this, like, other aspect of, like almost reshooting and be able to sit with your footage and watch it and uh, trap took a long time to edit because the movie took a long time to make mm. but i was editing while we were shooting so like and i was like oh we could fill in these gaps or like if you miss something you can come back to it or like so this is like this this is like your super bad for lack of a better term i don't know like super bad is like something like seth rogan and fucking evan whatever the fuck is it? i know that movie like 16 you're how old are you now I'm 25. You're 25, all right. I started, yeah. Oh, I wrote it when I was 16. We probably didn't start shooting until I was 18, 19, I think. And you've, you've had it, so like, and you, this is just like, and when did it come out? It came out this year, ba- or it's not, it's doing the festival circuit, so it's not out technically, but you could see it on the festival circuit yeah, this year, so basically. Like, this is like a six year It premiered project. in November. So yeah, like almost seven years, almost like seven years Damn. of making the whole thing. But then there was a lot of things that kind of slowed the production down, like COVID and like yeah. being stuck in the house. And then like I wasted time with this sound mixer that didn't work out. And then this other sound mixer like robbed me for a bunch of money. Yeah. And then we ended up getting the money back. And then I found I ended up finding uh, Mike. I'm going to butcher his last name. It's like an Italian. Uh, Compatielli. He runs Empress Studios in uh, Philly. Yeah. And uh, he's a great sound mixer and designer and. I pretty much designed most of the film, but he came in and just piece, piece put it, put his, you know, and take out my cheap, you know, because when you're editing the flick, you use cheap sounds or whatever yeah. just to fill it, and then he'll replace all those sounds. And right. he did like a surround 5.1 mix. So what's uh, what's it like, fucking like, 
after that six year nut bust, bro, like, what's it like feel like, like having this shit that you like conceived, like this baby? It's like being pregnant. For this six shit's years, crazy, bro. bro. Yeah, and I, that's funny you said that because making a movie is like giving birth to a fucking bowling ball every time you fucking do it. So, uh, yeah, exactly. I definitely feel it. Like it was definitely like a weight, and like I kind of just like, cr- like crashed. Yeah. It's like even now you just feel like cra- like crashed about. It. But like, I'm still up in the hype about it because like it's still showing at these festivals and stuff. But yeah, I'm getting into writing the next one. Yeah. Because you know once you do one, you're like you get that urge. You yeah, just want to do like, the next thing. Yeah, like I yeah. just want to jump into the next movie like right now. Yeah. But uh. The, the movies take so much out of me, so, like, I, I don't think I'd be one of the type of guys to have, like, you know, my next seven movies planned out. I I know things that I want to do, like, and I could do, but I kind of just, like, let the time take me and see how I'm feeling, because I could be feeling different how I am right, right now. Right. Like, the next movie, I want to do a comedy. Really? Yeah, I want to do a com. I want to do something not as dark. <laughs> I mean, it'll be a dark comedy, but I want to do something that's not as nihilistic is trap like yeah. maybe something like you gonna do like dark comedy type of shit yeah it's know. gonna be about a bunch of degenerate horse gamblers okay, in new right. jersey I saw a little bit of that so trap. it's still gonna be like yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i guess you're catching on Park yeah you're catching on to a theme yeah, yeah. You're catching on to a horse gambling theme so yeah basically yeah we're just chasing the uh chasing the lightning man howling at the moon bro <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, shit. Yeah, man. <laughs> Fucking. Word, bro. Uh, Anthony Edward Curry, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Afternoon FM. Check out Trap. Uh, where, where, where's, where's oh, it's screening uh, March 25th at the uh, Berkeley Hotel. It's up for the uh, Kevin Smith Homegrown Feature Award for the Garden State Film Festival. You can go to gsff.org and buy some tickets. Get some tickets to the flick. What else we got? We got anything else? You, you want to ask? Know, you, <laughs> you keep, how long have we been?